said a bad guy. Yeah, chico. Yeah, chico. You talking to the bad guy. Tooth picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Something happened to me. Something happened to you, okay? What's going on, everybody, man? It's Coach Bias here in Smackin' World. I got a very special guest. Introduce yourself. Hello, oh, Lorenzo Wright. Yeah, man, Coach Lorenzo Wright, man, he's the head basketball coach at Pascagoula, man, and how we start this off, Coach, and give everybody their flies when they come on the show, man. So, me being a ball boy, man, I used to look up to you back in the day, man, and in that early 90s, man, you was on that varsity team and go for it, and it went on going to Nichols to play, man. I used to just dream to put that Admiral jersey on, and you had the honor to do that, and be Frank Brown, which was the golden era of basketball, man. But most importantly, man, you can come to a, become a man, a father, a husband, and, and you've been doing great things for the community in Pascagoula. Sure. Uh, really appreciate what you're doing for the for the culture and basketball on the coast. Uh, trying to make sure you know we get it back to where it was and once they're in that golden era. So I really appreciate you what you're doing for your kids in Pascagoula, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, most definitely, man. Let's get on right into it. But let's talk about your journey, man, as a player in high school, man. Uh, tell everybody where you went to school at and how was it you know be. A scholar athlete, man. Like you said, I, I started off at, uh, at Gulf High School. Okay. Uh, finished in '95, many years ago, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was a, a, a McDonald's All American nominee, mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of pride myself on that. I always talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, that's one of the awards not many, too many kids get. Right. Um, once I finished in '95, I went on to play college basketball at Nickel State. Uh, in uh, 1998, we finished uh, first in the Southern Conference, played an NCAA tournament. Remember who y'all played? <laughs> we that played Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Bibby, Miles Simmons, yeah, and all them. I remember it. It was, it was a rough, rough night, man. <laughs> it was. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we uh, finished, like I said, won the Southern Conference tournament. Yeah. Uh, finished first. Had, had a pretty good career, man. Got a degree out, out the deal. Yeah. Um, started coaching um, in Patterson, Louisiana. Got my first. First opportunity to pass in Louisiana mm -hmm. in 2000. I uh, was an assistant coach for two years uh, to 2002. Uh, got my first head coaching spot at Patterson. Um, so that's just a place I love dearly, man. Um, was there for another two or three years, ended up coming back home. Um, was a, uh, started off as a behavior facilitator at North Gulfport, man. Wow. Um, uh, you know, mentoring at risk kids. Mm -hmm. Left there and started. Uh, got back into coaching at St. Martin for briefly for a minute um, with Tori Holloway being the principal. Um, and then I left there in the middle of the year and went to Harrison Central. I was Harris, at Harrison Central for, for half a year. Left Harrison Central with Ricky Stone and became the Gulfport. I was at Gulfport for about five or six years. Uh, Stone's last four or five years before he retired, the first time he retired, I should say. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then was there for Coach Miller's on Miller's first two, three years. Mm -hmm. Left there with the Diabville, um, turned the Diabville program around. We went, uh, man, we were ranked in the, in the uh, state for the first time. Yeah. First time ever, ranked number one on the coast, first time ever. Big deal. Big deal. Um, made the playoffs for the first time in years at that school. Uh, brought the win total up each year. Uh, Left there, had a great opportunity, man, to go to Pasadena. Been there now six years. Man, time and Six time, years, time man. Going. Six years. Um, uh, after six years, we've been to the quarterfinals twice. We've been close, knocking on the door. Yeah. Just hadn't really gotten over the hump yet, but we've had really good years. Yeah. Um, out of all six years, we had all winning seasons. Uh, we've only finished second in district like once. Uh, won the district, won, won at least either a district title or the Regular season title all the tournament each right. year. So right. uh, we've been fortunate, man. Uh, got some really good talent over there. Uh, man, unbelievable name a, talent. Yeah, name, name a couple of them young men, <laughs> man. Uh, that was for, like, if anybody's not familiar with basketball, basketball, name a couple of young men that really stand out as leaders for your team. Oh, uh, you be going back in years past, you got to start with Noel Jones. That was, that was the guy that was at my first year. Gosh, oh. Unbelievable leader. Yeah. Um, Noel was a dog. Had, Heart, had a heart of a champion, was a straight leader. Yeah. Um, the next two, three years, that two, three year period would probably be um, Jaden McCorvey, mm -hmm. uh, Diaz and Booker. Yeah. Um, I, 
can name so many yeah. guys off that yeah. team, man. Yeah, that, that, that was, was team. That was your, probably your deepest team. That was my deepest team. Yeah, um, that. Jonas Bird was another kid. Yeah. Uh, Zaren Cole, man, that, that group was deep. talented. We were, we were eight or nine deep. Yes, sir. Um, Absolutely. Now, the last three years, uh, we have a kid named Naylon Kid uh, that comes to mind. LeBaron McCovery. Uh, both of those guys are suitable really well. We had a kid that transferred in from Puerto Rico uh, named Carlos. Can't remember Carlos last night. Coach, who you calling, man? You making some calls on the board? <laughs> oh, coach, coach. Hey, that that fell my lap. That fell in my lap. And then this past year, um, John Davis. John yeah, Davis the third. Uh, Trace Joseph, Trace. man. Those those guys watching them the last four years grow from young boys to men, man. It's just been unbelievable. Absolutely. That's the um, joy of it. It's, it's, been, it's been a blessing, man. I love it over past school. I wouldn't. Don't want to leave from nothing at all. Yeah, man. That's great good, place. man. That's good. That's great. That's great news. I want to kind of go back a little bit, man. What were some of your best memories of being a, 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 a high school baller and a college player? Man, high school wise, was putting on that Avram uniform, man. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing like wearing that blue and orange. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though I, you know, I'm over past school now, yeah. I still, yeah. I still yeah. believe blue and orange yeah. until I play them. Yeah. Um, right. So high school wise, I would say that, you know, and that. That's when you, you, I first learned how to try to chase the, the championship. Mm -hmm. And then college-wise, would be just the whole college experience, man. Um, playing to uh, starving, being hungry, <laughs> and trying to figure out what you're gonna eat, and just the whole experience, man, of our college basketball and college life period. It just it prepares you for life, uh, for the ups and downs, the good and the bad. <coughs> Man, most different. So uh, there's good, good, good. You know, points you made about as far as a player. Who was some of the influence that made you want to coach after you, you know, you graduated, and got your degree? Um, probably going back, starting in high school, man. It was Coach D. I don't know if you remember Coach yeah, D. I do. I do. He you know, had curly hair. Yeah, he was the assistant underneath um, Coach Austin. I would say Coach Austin as well. But mm -hmm. Coach D. Man, he, I remember he pushed me a lot when I was in my uh, sophomore year of high school. Yeah. Um, coach D's, Coach Caldwell, um, and then Coach Bruce, my college coach. Um, he, he was the one that really pushed me over the hump, that told me I could I could do it because during my senior year, man, I, in college, I had a stress fraction of my foot. Um, I was 50 or senior, wasn't playing much, went from starting to not playing much at all, and I had to give it up, man, to a guy that was, was obviously better, at, better than me at the time. Right. And uh, so, you know, having my minutes reduced, you know, I, I took to just kind of mentoring guys as they came as they came off the floor, telling them what they could do, what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong. And uh, once I got that degree, man, and it was a guy over in Louisiana, Tony Bova, was uh, looking for an assistant. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Coach Bruce so put plugged me in, man. And he was one of my mentors as well. So that's good stuff, Coach. Man, uh, I mean, I know the season didn't end like you wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Man, you had a lot of uh, upperclassmen are returning and you was expected to you know do well but it's probably I know in your book you're a winner in your in, in your book in my book as well uh, how, how did the season go can you give us a quick summary how, how it went for you guys? Uh, the expectations were really high mm -hmm. um, and they, they but after they should have been based on you know the year that we had four we 17 and four last year mm -hmm. um, so the expectations were, were really high we had a lot of young guys too as well um, Honestly, in a nutshell, we just didn't meet the expectation. I um, mean, it happens sometimes. Really? Uh, but looking back at the, at the roster, we, you know, only had really had four seniors, um, two played a lot, um, and then the rest of the guys were young. Mm -hmm. So I, I got, you know, Dory McMillan coming back. He'll be a junior. Um, Trace is he coming? Tra back? Trace is a senior. He's oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Robert Miller, he'll be a senior oh, next year. Jaheim Portman, he'll be a senior. So we were. We were, the expectation was there, but we were really still young. So it could have gone either way. Yeah, yeah. But so we still finished, man. Like I said, we still made finished. Made the playoff run. Made the playoff run. Yeah. Got to the second round. Lost the pedal by one. Had a chance to beat him. Yeah. Uh, had, a, had a shot to beat him at the buzzer. Had control of the game. Just lost control of the game. They were they were a senior heavy team. Mm -hmm. They were really good. They put the lesson to the end. Yeah. <laughs> so we had them right there on the ropes. Just couldn't finish it. It's all good, man. You got you got plenty of years to you know get that state title. We know you'll make a run. Real serious question, man. It's not serious for real, but 
What do you feel about high school basketball getting a 35 second play? Uh, shot clock, excuse me. Do you, do you think that's a true, you know, is that a true question that the coaches, community, do y'all have that like, you know, you know, coaches have a uh, circle. Do y'all have those conversations or do you be like, man, it is what it is? I would love to see it. Um, I don't hold, I don't hold the ball. I like to get up and run. I like to press <laughs> and I like to uh, get after it. Um, so uh, the shot clock won't affect me. Um, I think it prepares the kids for, for the next level too as well. That's just what I'm saying. Now, I've also been in the game where uh, I, I played against a team and they held the ball for an entire court. There was only one shot taken. Oh. So, coach, yeah. Coach, coach, how did you deal with it? And how did you so deal we with were, it? So, we were up, so we were up um, 17 14 against this team. And we come out and we play, we get into a zone. And they were, they really was kind of hurting us. And uh, coach told them, tuck it. They tucked the ball. I thought they were going to do it for about four minutes, yeah. three or four minutes. Yeah. It turned into seven minutes and 45 seconds uh, before they ran a set. And they hit the last, they hit the one and only shot taken in that quarter. We went half time tied at 17. Wow. So I would love to see a shot clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because that part of it. But I get, you know, some some some, some coaches up field or some teams don't have the athletes that other teams may have. And this is where this is where this come about. So now they're trying to reclassify all the schools. Mm -hmm. If they reclassify the school by the school population, do you think balance out the good and the bad, in your opinion? If so you guys are 6A, mm -hmm. but you really borderline, yeah. population-wise, mm -hmm. 5A. Do you think that will help? I, I, for, for us, I think the reclassify, reclassification helps for us because now we, we know what we are. Mm -hmm. So we know we'll be, we'll definitely be 6A. Mm -hmm. Before we were going 5A, 6A, 5A, 6A, mm -hmm. we're going back and forth. So um, does that help the shot clock situation? Yeah. No, not really? Not. Okay. Yeah, I just, it's just something that was a really hot topic this year, man. A lot of, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of teams was holding the ball. I really don't have a problem with it because uh, it's, it's in the game. You know, it, you can't. I mean, what can you do about it? But then again, can you imagine going to a football game and there's no play clock and the team just stay in the huddle right. until they're ready to run the play? That's the kind right. of analogy I like to use for that. I was like, so. I really would like to see shot clock. It just, it just prepares the kids for the next level. Mm -hmm. It shows them, hey, we got 35 seconds. We can't just hold the ball. We got to play them in the game. Right. And I just think it's, it's better basketball. Even though, like like I said, we always talk about the 90s as a golden era. I, I'm always standing on that until the kids of this generation change my mind mm -hmm. and the narrative. Uh, you guys didn't hold the ball. It was right. running up the floor. You you hold. If you got dead in, you got calls, you got dunked on. You got short memory, you deal with it after the game and keep playing. So, you know, that's the kind of thing I kind of want to see. Now, I said all that to say, man, dude, what is it going to take for the Colts basketball? We had seven teams go to, to uh, Jackson. Right. What is it going to take to get that consistently every year, in your opinion? Uh, getting to Jackson every year? Or yeah. getting over the hump of getting to Jackson? Like, it, it, just this Colts teams, period. Because, you know, we were down. We mm -hmm. were down. It's just what it was. That's just what it was. We were down some years. What is it going to take to like have those beloved, those past rulers, those past Christian hands to keep making those runs year in, year out? You know a coach team is going to be a representative in the Final Four. That's why I, I, I think, I think uh, it's two way, two way to answer that. Um, I think one of the players have got to get out of the mindset of being a big fish in a little pond. Okay. Uh, meaning that we got to get out of the mindset of just only wanting to be the best on the coast. And we, we got to develop, the kids have to develop a mindset of wanting to be the best in the state. Gotcha. Um, so, and then on the coaching side, I would say pretty much the same thing. Um, but I think all the coaches, I don't, I don't think none of the coaches on the coach just want to be the best. Right. The coaches, I think we all want to be the best in the state. The goal ball. Right, we all want the goal ball. That's the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, but for us to help our kids out, I think we got to get off the coach and play more. So okay. I think we got to get out and go to Jackson and play, go to Meridian and play, yeah. and at least on the you know the south half of the state and go play and get get into other areas. Right. I think we kind of beat up each other, beat each other up a lot on the coast. Yeah, and hey, I, I saw you did that. You went up to Jackson. I can't I can't think of the name of the class. It's the Battle of 
when you went to Jacksonville. Oh, Rumble in the South. Rumble in the South. Mm -hmm. Rumble in the South. I saw you took your team up there. I think that's great, man. You just get a chance of a play playoff atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Kids get to see somebody besides, you know, coach teams. That's a great point, coach. I, I really appreciate you keeping your honesty about it, man. So, you know, that's that's just I just want to see good ball. Yeah. I just want to see us rise and get a gold ball, man. Mm -hmm. We were close this year, but yeah. it, it just didn't happen. Which next year is always next year, and I, I really believe, you know, Pasquale and other teams around the surrounding areas will make that make that run, man. Mm -hmm. I really believe that, man. But coach, man, I, I really appreciate you. I ain't gonna hold you, man. You sure. gave me uh, some good insight of uh, your, your, your journey. Uh, really appreciate. It. Don't let this be your last time, man. Oh. Definitely won't be your last, man. I'm well, gonna sign off with Coach uh, Coach Wright, man, out of Pasquale, man. See you next time. Something happened to me, something happened to you, okay?